I think anybody who's shopped for clothes probably understands the concept of heterogeneity. So there's this distinction between a one-size-fits-all approach to comparative effectiveness research and what we call a more personalized approach. Different drugs work differently on different people, um, and different people have preferences for um, drugs with fewer side effects, and others are able to tolerate side effects. So that notion of patient diversity is really what we're trying to capture. There are recent methods in um, the economic analysis of data that allow people, researchers, to uh, estimate individual specific effects of drugs. So in other words, we could look at data on, say, 100,000 people um, comparing two treatments and be able to figure out what each treatment is going to do on each one of those individuals, even though each person might not be treated literally with two drugs at the same time. We exploit the outliers to help us understand how people respond differently to a pair of treatments. I think everybody understands this concept that in fact patients are different and they need different things, but it's extremely difficult or has been extremely difficult to make that concept practical. So it's really easy to look at two therapies and say therapy A is always better than therapy B, so let's give it to everybody. And so people have tended to gravitate towards the simpler, and more transparent, straightforward approach. What we're trying to do is show people that there are in fact practical methods for figuring out when patient diversity can be identified and how payers can respect that diversity. But ultimately, we think it's not really the role of the payer to decide how patients get treated. It's the role of the physician and the patient to figure out what therapies work best given a patient's preferences and given their own clinical response to these drugs. I think that this is a really exciting time in um, medicine because there's a lot more evidence on how treatments work than there ever has been. Doctors have so much at their disposal. But I think the goal going forward is to figure out how to use that evidence to help physicians make better decisions rather than using it to confine and constrain the decisions that physicians make to treat their patients.